Hi everybody, this is Van Molyneux from Freedom Domain Radio. I hope you're doing well. So we're going to talk a little bit about Marine Le Pen. This is the French presidential candidate on April 23rd, of course, 2017. France will hold its presidential election. Now, Marine Le Pen is currently embroiled in two financial probes. She has struggled through financing resistance from the banking establishment and predictably found herself facing direct opposition from the European Union in the ongoing war between the collectivists and at least the nationalistic individualists. Uh, This is the biggest conflict that is going on in the West at the moment and is absolutely going to determine the future of the West, as in, is there a West in the way that we've understood it and developed it over the past few thousand years, or is it going to be drowned under a sea of collectivism and globalism? As the National Front prepared for the launch of Marine Le Pen's presidential bid in February, they found it difficult to secure the required bank loans to finance their campaign. Interesting. National Front Secretary General Nicolas Bay said, For months we've been looking for a loan from a French banks or European banks. At this stage, we still haven't found a sufficient loan for the presidential and legislative campaigns. It is a real scandal, he said that the French banks aren't playing the game of democracy. There are certain candidates who have a lower guarantee than Marine Le Pen, but have obtained bank loans. This poses a real problem of discrimination founded on political opinion. Now, of course, Marine Le Pen, not a big fan of the European Union. If France leaves the European Union, um, it seems almost certain then Italy would follow suit. The European Union would collapse. Uh, And um, what happens to banking if the European Union collapses? What happens to the banking sector, to banking investments, to banking profitability? So are they being objective when it comes to who they finance and who they don't? After an inability to find a bank willing to issue the National Front a loan, Le Pen accepted a 6 million euro loan from Cotelec, a company owned by her father and controversial National Front founder, Jean-Marie Le Pen. Jean-Marie Le Pen was stripped of his party membership in August of 2015 after making several controversial comments. After the political dust-up, the elder Le Pen and his daughter reportedly severed personal ties, but the financial link between National Front and Cotelec has remained. While the 6 million euro loan should be enough to sustain the National Front through the presidential election, they are ill-positioned for the upcoming parliamentary elections, which begin in June 2017. Accepting funding from the controversial National Front founder sparked controversy, but the Eurosceptic NF political party previously faced hostile press related to their financial arrangements. In 2014, National Front borrowed 9 million euros from a Russian-backed bank which eventually became insolvent, prompting claims of Vladimir Putin's influence and subversion of the political party, the Russians! Damn, that just seems so familiar. I Deja vu all over again. I could have sworn I've heard that before. The Russians are influencing them. Marine Le Pen, February 4th, 2017, said this. What is at stake in this election is the continuity of France as a free nation. Our existence as a people. The French have been dispossessed of their patriotism. They are suffering in silence from not being allowed to love their country. This plague of medieval monks' self-flagellation, of self-hatred and so on, that has been infesting the West for the past half century, largely led by the dissolute relativism and anti-Western hostility of the communists and socialists, is a huge pathology. It is a gangrene in the very soul of the West that has been implanted there, because the West cannot be conquered militarily, therefore it must be brought down existentially from the inside. And the fight for that rests with those of us with the better arguments. Uh, And so the West's supposed history of evil and oppression and colonialism and blah, 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 um, well, uh, that's nonsense. The West is attacked because people in the West have a conscience and believe, perhaps erroneously, that universalism uh, of ethics is shared around the world. And... um, 
the West uh, brought in rights for women, uh, the West brought in white rights for minorities, the West freed the slaves, the West ended uh, the slave trade around the world, uh, and the West is the best. It's just the way it is. Historically, if you were a space alien, that's what you'd say. Looking at the world as a whole, uh, the West uh, has self-flagellated for slavery for hundreds of years now, uh, despite the fact that the West was involved in the slave trade the least, and the 100 million plus slaves from Africa, black slaves killed uh, by the Muslim slave trade. Uh, I don't see a lot of self-flagellation from the head of Saudi Arabian governments and other governments around that. So yeah, the West have universalization of ethics and they have a conscience and um, thus the West has become a giant squishy nerd target for all of the aggressive ideologies around the world. And that's the end of the speech for me. So Marine Le Pen went on to say, the divide is no longer between the left and the right, but between the patriots and the globalists. Financial globalization and Islamist globalization are helping each other out. Those two ideologies want to bring France to its knees. And uh, people have said this uh, about um, Iran as well, uh, currently uh, a uh, Islamist uh, theocracy, that uh, the leftists and the Islamists worked together. And the Islamists got in and then decimated the leftists. On February 20th, 2017, police conducted a raid on Le Pen's National Front Party headquarters. At the time of the raid, Le Pen was visiting Lebanon, where she infamously refused to wear a headscarf and walked away from a meeting with the country's top Sunni Muslim religious leader. T two points here. Number one, given the crime statistics in France, where tens of thousands of cars are burned every single year, there are massive no-go zones and escalating assaults and rapes and violence, it's really great that the police have time to raid Le Pen. Boy, isn't it really important on their list of priorities to make sure that one gets done. Nothing politically motivated about it in any way, shape, or form. I'm absolutely not sure. So that's one thing. Priorities, people, priorities. And number two, uh, the feminists uh, from Sweden were more than happy to wear the headscarf in subjugation to um, Islamic leaders. Uh, Marine Le Pen was not willing to do it, and therefore she is continually scorned and aggressed against by feminists who are basically socialists in comfortable shoes. Anyway, National Front Statement. Quote, this is uh, regarding the, um, the police raid. It looks on the face of it like a media operation whose goal is to disturb the course of the presidential campaign. National Front Vice President Florian Philippon said, This is as void as space. These are media stunt searches on the day when she, Le Pen, gets a two-point bounce in the polls. It's always when the system is in panic that these affairs come out. The police raid was part of an investigation related to the improper use of European Union parliamentary funds. God, can you imagine the European Union mis- using funds in any way, shape, or form. They're very, very sensitive about these issues, people. Investigators allege that National Front members used European Union legislative aids to conduct party business while on the European Parliament payroll, defrauding it of approximately 340,000 euros. The European Union asked Le Pen to repay the 340,000 euros, essentially admitting wrongdoing, and when she refused, the European Parliament began docking half of her monthly 16,000 euro salary. Now, again, I'm no lawyer, but just as a sentient carbon-based life form, I guess I have a question. Isn't there supposed to be some kind of process? Um, I mean, isn't there supposed to be some kind of trial? Isn't there some burden of proof? Isn't there a presumption of innocence? I mean, how do you just get to accuse someone and then start docking their pay? No process. Aren't you kind of making the case for her that the EU is dangerous and totalitarian and enormously corrupt. Just my particular thought about the situation. On February 22nd, 2017, the Paris Prosecutor's Office charged Frédéric Chatillon with, quote, misuse of company assets, end quote, related to an investigation into National Front campaign financing in 2014 and 2015. Chatillon headed a company previously contracted by the National Front Party for communications work. The Le Pen Confident is accused of loaning company funds to a National Front satellite group, and in France it is illegal for companies to make contributions to political parties. So they're, they're on that massive danger to French sovereignty, like white on rice, like a fat kid on a Smarty. On February 23rd, 2017, Marine Le Pen's chief of staff, Catherine Grisset, 
was charged with breach of trust connected to the European Union Parliamentary Funds investigation, which prompted the police raid. Le Pen's bodyguard, Thierry Ligier, was also detained for questioning, but was released without charges, perhaps because he's enormous. It is alleged that it was sorry. It is alleged that Leger was paid more than forty one thousand five hundred euros between October and December twenty eleven under the guise that he was an EU parliamentary assistant. Le Pen confident, confidently refused to appear for questioning before the EU and denied any wrongdoing. Gals got balls. I'll just tell you that. Marine Le Pen said, "It is surprising that two months before the presidential election there is this great judicial activity." The French can tell the difference between genuine scandals and political dirty tricks. Marine Le Pen said February 24th, 2017, It is time to build another Europe. And whether Madame Merkel, Monsieur Schultz, or the other commissioners want it or not, it is time to do away with an EU that is tempted by a fusion that destroys the Europe of nations. The European Union is not the solution. It's the problem. March 2nd, 2017, European Union lawmakers lifted Le Pen's parliamentary immunity for posting three photos of Islamic State executions on Twitter in December 2015. So, this is uh, important. Why? Well, you have immunity, so you can post stuff. Oh, we're taking away your immunity retroactively, which means immunity, it's a trap. What on earth is this supposed to mean? You have the right to do it, but later on we might change whether you have the right to do it and prosecute you retroactively. That's sort of number one. Uh, Number two, um, she posted pictures of Islamic State executions. Now, um, sometimes the EU doesn't seem to be that upset, or individual member countries don't seem to be that upset about letting ISIS fighters back into their countries. So you don't mind the executions as much as photos of the executions. You don't mind the executioners as much as photos of the executions. By God, the moment we started allowing less competent people into public discourse, you get these crazy laws against free speech. Isn't it inevitable? If you're confident, just go make the case. Well, you'd render the government because someone said something I didn't like. How to disqualify yourself from any respect or competence in social discourse. So Le Pen's immunity shielded her from prosecution. By lifting it, they are opening her up to legal consequences and further police questioning. The prosecutor involved in the investigation now has several options. Drop the case, appoint an investigating magistrate to continue the probe, or send the case straight to trial. If Le Pen is convicted of publishing violent images, she could face a penalty of three years in prison and a fine of 75 thousand euros. Now, admittedly, the law is a bit of a strange net. It often captures small fish while letting the big fish swim free. So it's very unlikely she's going to end up with a year in prison and or a fine of 75,000 euros. But that's not the point. Right? The point is to hold her up as a big shining example of shut the hell up. People in Europe who are concerned about some of this stuff, don't post, don't tweet, don't share information, don't share facts. It doesn't matter if they're true. It only matters that we find them offensive and we are going to really screw up your life and bury you in legal bills and negative publicity should you dare post anything that countervails the prevailing fantasy of perfect integration of disparate cultures. Well, that's just the way (laughs) that things work. So she's held up as a warning to, to everyone else. Now, this is not the first time Le Pen's immunity has been lifted by the European Union Parliament. Gotcha. Bait and switch. It's like Lucy and Charlie Brown with the football. You got immunity. No, you don't. I think the EU is kind of very effectively making the case here that the EU is hopelessly corrupt and should never be trusted. You've got immunity. No, you don't. Got immunity. No, you don't. Post whatever you want. Oh, a couple of years from now, we're going to threaten you with three years of jail for posting whatever you want. Enormously corrupt, retroactive laws, changing standards. I think pretty much for political purposes. I think you're kind of making the case for Le Pen by treating her in this way. In 2013, Le Pen was under investigation for incitement to discrimination over people's religious beliefs after saying, and I quote, and this is regarding a spillover of Muslims from mosques. They were then praying uh, throughout Paris streets. And she said, I'm sorry, but for those who really like to talk about the Second World War, 
If we're talking about occupation, we can also talk about this while we're at it, because this is an occupation of territory. It's an occupation of swaths of territory, of areas in which religious laws apply. For sure, there are no tanks, no soldiers, but it's an occupation all the same, and it weighs on people. And um, she was then under investigation for that. The National Front leader was prosecuted related to the case in 2015, but eventually the charges were dropped. But I'm sure it's fun to think how much she had to spend on legal bills. And she could have faced a year uh, in prison for this statement. Despite these scandals, Le Pen's political support has been holding strong. Now, I did do a presentation on some of the demographics and crime statistics in France, which we'll link to below, which I think you might want to check out uh, no matter where you are in the world. It's interesting information. But um, yeah, I strongly encourage people in France to take some of these scandals with a tiny, tiny grain of salt. It is vaguely possible that they could be politically motivated. You have to ask yourself if these, um, if these charges, if these pursuits would have been laid or pursued against a left-wing a party, a, a pro uh, immigration party. I wonder. It's hard to say, but I think you can search your own mind and heart to figure that out. So yes, please like, subscribe, and share of this video. This is important information to get out to the French people and to people around Europe as a whole. Um, I think that everyone knows where I stand with regards to the European Union. I don't believe that an additional layer of self-interested, self-motivated bureaucrats is necessary to run a civilization unless you're talking about running it into the very ground.